This is scripture and sermon for Ash Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022, here at First Presbyterian Church of Gardner, Kansas. There are three scripture passages today. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. The second reading is Psalm 51, often used, always used for Ash Wednesday services. Hear God's word and God's call for you. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean, Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me, sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God. You will not despise. And the final reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 26. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, He asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? 
Here ends this reading. May God bless it to our understanding. May God create in us clean, pure hearts that are open to God's word. The dual purpose of Lent is introspection and connection. Looking internally to examine ourselves and to try to be better, more faithful, more of who God calls us to be, and at the same time looking externally to God to deepen our relationship and our understanding of God, and externally to the community to deepen our unity with Jesus Christ. Two sides of the same season, two sides to faithfulness. The reading from the psalm is the reading for the beginning of Lent every year. We begin by examining ourselves, our lives, and asking God to examine our hearts. We begin on Ash Wednesday with confession and repentance. Blot out my transgressions, scripture says. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. We acknowledge whatever needs to change in our lives and we promise to try to do our best, to be better, to live into God's will for us. Sometimes Ash Wednesday feels like a, a dark day. Uh, confessing our sins, perhaps feeling guilty for mistakes. Uh, we talk about dust, we recognize our mortality, our death. We mark ourselves with ashes, smudges of black, as reminders of sin. But let me remind you now, while that introspection is important, it is not the final point. Uh, the point is redemption, cleansing, washing, starting all over, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and put a new and right spirit within me. And God promises God will do that by God's grace. The heart of Ash Wednesday and of Lent is not the darkness, but the light of Christ. The promise of God is the center of this tradition. The promise lived out at the end of this season, which we are working toward with resurrection. The promise of new life in Christ and the celebration of God's grace. That is the heart of Ash Wednesday. We don't wallow in the ashes. We rejoice in the cross. We remember the gift of grace that frees us from all darkness and offers us new life. New, free, clear, clean life in Jesus Christ, light of the world. In the New Testament reading for tonight from Matthew, uh, Jesus asks, who am I? Who, who do people say I am? Who do you say I am? Who am I? I wonder why he asked. Jesus knew who he was. Uh, Jesus wasn't asking for clarification. Jesus was asking to see how much his disciples understood, who am I? I wonder if Jesus was trying to remind them of that great I am of our faith, to point them forward and toward understanding that Jesus is the great I am. Who am I? I am. That Yahweh and Jesus of Nazareth are one and the same. Who am I? I am. I am the Lord of sea and sky. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the creator of all that is. I am your God. I am light of the world. I am savior of all. I am. So Jesus asked the disciples, who am I? And, and they quote some of the misconceptions, the misunderstandings that are running around in popular culture of that day. But then Peter got it exactly right. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. You are the one who will save God's people. You are the one long promised, the one whom we are waiting for. You are the one we're depending on. You are God's own son. Peter got it exactly right. Peter didn't even understand how right he got it. The funny thing is, in the very next story, Peter got it all wrong. Get behind me, Satan. 
Peter didn't even know what he was saying. But Peter had faith. And Peter followed Jesus. I can't be too hard on Peter because we do it too. We, even, even this side of the resurrection, knowing what we know, sometimes we try to make Jesus into something Jesus is not. Um, sometimes we get it right and sometimes we don't seem to understand Jesus at all. Sometimes we try to make Jesus into some pious copy of, of who we think Jesus should be. We, sometimes we miss the point entirely of God's grace overflowing, abundant, and for all. Sometimes we think perhaps we're more righteous and faithful or, or the way we live our faith is better than anyone else. Lent is a time to e examine that, examine ourselves and our assumptions, and to ask God to remake us, to reshape us in any way that needs to be remade. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Put a new and right spirit in me. On Ash Wednesday, we, we get a chance to start over. We ask ourselves who we are as children of God. Who am I? Are we following Jesus Christ? Are we doing our best? Are we all that God has called us to be, who am I? And we promise to make improvements, but, but the more important promise is not any promise that we will make. The more important promise is God's promise. God promises to give us grace, to clean our hearts, to let us start over, to offer us anything we need, to love us absolutely, unconditionally, and always, to love us. On Ash Wednesday, it, it's about holding on to that promise of God and believing God can do anything, even remake us. God can even make us new. God can even fix us and restore us and make us right. God can even mold new life in us and help us to be the best image of God that we are called to be, the best image of God that is possible. God makes us able to follow Jesus Christ. God makes us able to love God and to love others. Just as God grabbed dust out of the earth and formed it into human life and breathed into that soul, so God holds us today and shapes us and breathes life into each and every one of us. Anything is possible. Anything is possible by the grace of God. Anything is possible because of God's love. For the next 40 days and Sundays, uh, we walk this Lenten journey asking, who am I? Who am I? Child of God, beloved, created in God's image, Disciple of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Who am I? Who is God calling me to be? Who has God made in me? Who am I? Today, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are created by God. You are loved by God. You are shaped by God. You you will return to God. You belong to God. Remember. Today, remember that you are dust and be grateful. Remember that God gives you everything you need. Remember that God fills you with new life with every breath you take. Remember that your heart belongs to God. You are able to know God because of Jesus Christ. Remember, you are dust saved by the cross of Christ. Remember, you are redeemed, forgiven, set free. Remember that you are called to follow Jesus and you, you have one to follow who will show you the way. Remember, 
Remember that you are dust, and by God's grace, you shall live. Remember and give thanks. Amen.